Okay, we're going to talk through the Guitar One parts for Made For This, the For All Seasons song, and this is uh, the specific two guitar arrangement uh, that we're going to be using to train uh, CTI Music Ministries 17-18 uh, full-time team. Uh, so two guitars, like I said, this is Guitar One, the parts that we're going to talk through. Um, and uh, you're going to start by playing uh, kind of clean octaves, uh, and then you can kind of kick in your distortion at the second time around. The intro starts with just guitars. Now here's the tricky part of this intro. Um, number one, playing the octaves so that you're only hitting the octave notes, like, and not full bar chords, or, you know, not letting other gross notes get in there. You just want super clean octaves, just, just note and the octave above it, not that one. Those two. Um, and this is going to take a little bit of precision, uh, precision with your right hand, and also a little bit of uh, subtle muting with your first finger there. Uh, it might take you some practice if you've never played octaves before, but it's okay. It'll get there. Uh, if you're having trouble practicing, practice with metronome, and it's easily the best way to practice. Uh, anyway, so, oh, that's uh, challenge number one. Challenge number two in this intro is that uh, both guitar one and guitar two are going to be playing octaves together, and it'll be the same rhythm, so it's really going to be a challenge for you guys to lock in together. Um, it's going to sound really cool when you guys have it down, um, but it will probably take some practice together. Uh, so just keep that in mind, and don't get discouraged if at the beginning it sounds kind of um, kind of shaky and kind of rough and a little bit sloppy, keep working at it because if you can get it really clean and tight, it's going to sound awesome. So here is the guitar one octaves that you'll be playing. You're going to start on the A and the G string uh, and you're going to start on seven and nine, just like this. And like I said, use your first finger to just kind of mute that string in the middle uh, so that you don't hear that note because that's not one of the octaves. Uh, from here, you're going to move down to eight and six just a fret down, and then down to two and four, and then up to four and six, and then you're going to move up a string to D and B, the D and B string, and at this point, now up to this point you've been keeping one fret in between uh, your fingers, in between your octave notes, when you move up a string you're going to need to keep two frets in between, so I usually use my first and third finger to play octaves on the the A and G strings, and then when I move up to D and B, I use uh, my first and fourth finger, like that. And you'll be on 9 and 6, or 6 and 9, up to 11, or 7 and 11. And again, all these, uh, these are tabbed out for you on your uh, guitar notes sheet, so if you have that, follow along, it'll probably make more sense to see it and hear it uh, all together. But, uh, one more time. rhythm with the full strumming pattern, it sounds something like this. Like that. Uh, you'll play it twice through, one time super clean, uh, and then the second time will be, the first time through is just guitars, and the second time through will be full band. So at that point you can kick on, if you would like, some, uh, you know, overdrive or something like that. Like that. Um, <clears throat> you'll know, notice when I switch down to the the G and or the D and B strings, I kind of have trouble not hitting those low notes. It's just a lazy right hand in my case. Uh, but if you're having the same problem, just as kind of a carryover until you uh, practice just a little bit more precision in your right hand you can use uh, your second finger to kind of mute those low strings so that you don't hear them. Um, anyway, that is the intro for you. Uh, if you want to hear it one more time, why not? Uh, sorry, that's what I wanted. <laughs> Like I said, you and Guitar 2 are both going to be playing together in that same rhythm. You won't be playing the same uh, octave notes, you'll be playing complementing notes, um, but 
you will be playing exactly the same rhythm and they'll be playing octaves too. So it's going to be really important for you guys to work together and work hard to get that clean and together. Moving on, we're going to talk about verse one. Uh, you'll be out for the first half. Uh, when our hearts beat loud like the sound of a drum, uh, you know, the first two lines. And then in the third line, when our lungs breathe deep with the sound, that is when you're going to come in with just some arpeggios. You're actually going to repeat these in verse two. Um, in the recording, verse one, it actually is a guitar playing this part. In verse two, there's a little synth, do 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 that kind of thing. I don't remember what key it's in, but anyway. Um, uh, you're going to be kind of covering that motion, melodic, arpeggiated line both times. And just for simplicity's sake, you can play the same thing both times. It's fine. Uh, so the chords, again, the chord partials that you'll be playing are written out for you uh, on the guitar note sheet, so you can uh, check those out. Uh, and if you're looking at your chart, um, the C sharp minor gets held for a long time, and then uh, the B and the E over G under uh, over top of uh, Sound of New Life. Uh, those two chords are super fast. They're like a beat each, and the tempo of the song is fast enough that um, they go by really, really fast. So what I do, instead of switching completely to those other uh, chords, I play my C sharp minor. Sorry, let me, uh, I'm going to clean that up a little bit just so you can kind of hear what I'm playing a little better. Uh, so I play my C sharp minor, just kind of, and I like to kind of do the full chord, just keeps me anchored, but I don't play down here. I just... And then for the B over E, I play that. So this is just the uh, the G and B string uh, barred on the fourth fret there. It's part of why I keep that bar there, just to kind of keep myself anchored. And then I add my second finger on five. And those are just, you know, two little notes that are part of the B chord and part of the E chord, and then you don't have to, like, switch to a different shape. You can just kind of grab those two notes and it keeps you uh, in time and it's fast enough for you to be able to get those notes. So and then to A, E, F sharp minor. And then it just repeats itself over and over from there. So C sharp minor, there, I actually just, like I said, I do that, that bar chord there and just kind of stay on like the upper notes, the upper strings. For that quick B and E, just like that on the, the B and G strings. Uh, for the A, you'll do kind of a little bar on the fifth fret and then six and seven, like that. E is just a D shape, but up two frets. And then F sharp minor is uh, five, six, and seven, just like that. And then you get right back to the C sharp minor. Now, <clears throat> those are uh, the chords you'll be playing and the right counts of those chords, but as far as what strings you hit when you're arpeggiating, uh, I don't know if that's a word, but it is now, uh, it doesn't really matter. There's not a set pattern. Uh, it's pretty loose for interpretation. Um, so. Feel free to play it however you want. I'm going to play it the way I feel most comfortable, but if you want to do... Or whatever it is that you want to play, yeah, mix it up. I don't care. It's all good. Um, <clears throat> so I'll show you in time. I'm going to slow that verse down just a little bit just so you can kind of hear what I'm playing, but um, this is what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. like that. Uh, that's what you'll be playing in verse one. Um, and like I said, it's pretty, pretty free what, what strings you want to play when, when you're arpeggiating. Um, so just kind of make it up as you want. Uh, here it is again, something closer to performance time. Yeah. So one, two, three, four.
was a little bit messy, but you get the idea. Um, and that part is, it's really fast and there's a lot of kind of quick motion. Uh, I have been using my hands to kind of finger pick it, but if I were playing it uh, like you in performance, I would uh, work with a metronome real slow and then work it up uh, until I could play it with a pick, until I could pick all those arpeggios, um, just because, you know, I'm a classical guitarist, I'm more comfortable with my fingers, um, but uh, I would work on trying to get it with a pick, because that'll just give you a, a cleaner, more defined sound in the context of full band. So um, if you need to start by finger picking it, that's fine, but try and work up to playing it with a pick because that's going to sound, it's going to give you a cleaner sound and it's going to be easier for your, your sound tech to kind of give you a more defined sound in the mix uh, that way. So let's move on to the chorus. So you're actually going to play a really cool melodic line in the chorus um, and uh, I will show you, you'll want to kick on, you know, some over, overdrive and some distortion uh, and it sounds a little bit something like this. Uh, and then in a double chorus, you'll just go ahead and repeat that line. So it's tabbed out on your guitar notes sheet, but just for uh, reference, for the sake of talking it through, you're going to start on 9 on the G string. And then 12 on the B string, and 11 on the G string, and repeat that. And then you'll move up to 9 on the B string, 12 on the B string, 11 on the G string, and then 10 on the B string, and down to 9 time in context. That is your melody line in the chorus. Like I said, uh, that's once through and in a double chorus you'll just play it twice. Um, and then after the chorus is the turn, which is just like the intro. So you'll play that those same octaves that you had played in the intro, and you can just leave. You don't want to kick off your delay, obviously, because otherwise that'll make it super, super, super muddy. Uh, but you want to leave your overdrive on just like the second time through the intro, not that first kind of clean time. Verse two, you're gonna play those same arpeggios that you played in verse one. Like I said, the actual moving line in the recording in verse two and verse one is a little bit different, so you can switch it up later if you feel like you want to, if you wanna get adventurous, by all means, go ahead. The idea here is to create some sort of melodic interest that has that uh, 16th note uh, kind of driving motion arpeggio kind of feeling. So if you wanna change it up and voice it a little bit lower to kind of mimic that synth line, uh, in the actual recording, that's fine. You can do that. Uh, or for now, especially as you're still learning it, you can just stick with the same arpeggios in the same way that you play them for verse one. Uh, the second chorus is just like chorus one, so you get that cool high melodic line. Um, and the instrumental uh, is the part where there's kind of those full band hits. So, bum 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 bum, that kind of, yeah. So. Uh, we're going to talk through that because you're going to be playing octaves again on that part. So, so you're going to start out on uh, 6 and 9 on the G and B strings. Like that. And like I said, you want to make sure that you're not letting out any, letting ring uh, any notes that aren't that C sharp minor. Up to 9 and 12, down to 2 and 5, down one more fret to 1 and 4, and up to 4 and 7, and that's it, and you just repeat it, so it sounds kind of something like this. And uh, the, the trick of this is to be able to really lock in with the rest of the band. The entire band is playing those hits right there in the instrumental. So really listen and lock in with them. So here's the instrumental. the end. 
band, and again, the whole rest of the band is going to be doing that. Um, I played that a little bit sloppy, but uh, in full band, you'll get a chance to practice it over and over and over again and kind of clean it up. So, in the bridge, you are going to be playing another very cool melodic line, uh, and it goes like this. It's super high, so it's going to be a quick quick switch from you from those those building uh, octaves in the instrumental to the, the bridge melodic line, but once you play it once or twice, you'll, you'll hit it just fine. And your melodic line is going to sound like this. So, very simple. Uh, I start with my fourth finger on the 17th fret on the B string here. And then uh, my first finger hits the 14th fret on the E string. And my third finger hits the 16th fret on that same E string. And you repeat that figure. And you go right back to that same note that seven, on the 17th fret. And then I use my third finger, hit 16th fret on the B string. And then down to the 14th. So that is your line for the bridge, and then from the bridge you will go back into a chorus, and you're going to be playing the exact same thing you've played in every other chorus, which is that uh, that cool melody line on nine. <laughs> And that'll bring you through to the end of the song. So that's it. Pretty easy. Just as a quick review, uh, we can talk through your parts. Um, again, these are all written on your guitar notes, but this will be a good kind of review for you. The intro, you will play that progression twice, uh, and you'll be on those, those octaves that are tabbed out in your guitar notes. The first time, you'll want to do it really clean, so you get that kind of like um, steely percussion-ish... Per that's not a word. Um, <laughs> you'll get that kind of like steely percussive sound. Uh, from you know the, the strings and the very clean sound, uh, so you'll play it once through very clean, and then you'll want to kick on an overdrive and play it again really full and kind of crunchy. When you get to the verse, you're gonna be out for the first half, and then the second half on that third line is when you're gonna come in with those arpeggios on those partials that we practiced. The chorus, you'll be playing uh, that chorus melodic line that's tabbed out for you in your notes. In the turn, the turn is going to be just like the second time through the intro, so uh, crunchy overdrive sound on the octaves, just like you played them before. Verse 2 is going to be like verse 1, except you come in right from the start, so those arpeggios, uh, you'll start in right off the bat and you'll play through them uh, twice the time that you played through them in verse 1. Uh, the second chorus for you is just like the first chorus, uh, you're just going to go back to that melodic line. The instrumental are going to be those octave hits, bum 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 bum, like that. Uh, the bridge is going to be the higher melodic line up on kind of 17, 14, 16, that area. Um, and then you're going to go back into a chorus, which is going to have that same chorus melodic line from all the other choruses. So um, this one is probably a little more complicated than some of the other songs that you've been playing because uh, it's not just straight chords. You get some really cool like arpeggios, uh, some melodic lines and stuff like that. Um, I think it's going to be a blast. Uh, but if you're having trouble kind of getting uh, some of those octaves clean or some of the melodic lines or those arpeggios, um, like I said, the best thing that you can do is to practice with a metronome. Now, let's see, the, the tempo that we're going to play it at is like 125. So if you pull yourself way down to like 90 BPM or something like that and start practicing there, uh, then you can slowly increase uh, the, the tempo um, as you play it, just when you can play it really clean at a slower tempo and, and perfectly right in time at a slower tempo, then you can start to increase it. And I know practicing with the metronome sounds really boring, um, but it's the best way to practice. It's so helpful. So if you're having trouble um, with any of these parts, practice with the metronome. And if you're having uh, trouble beyond that, or if you just um, have questions or whatever, uh, let me know. Thanks.